Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Cloud Show. This is the show where we talk to leaders in the cloud or in cloud projects about things that are important to know or important to have a handle on when you're running a project towards the cloud. Um, in this show, we have plenty of, of great guests, and today is certainly no exception. We're going to, to talk to the founder of Cisho Corner, Mr. Mahesh Shand, and we are going to talk a lot about how to manage costs for the cloud. I think that could be number one question for any cloud project that's going to the cloud. It's about how do I manage cost and how do I keep control of my costs? So today will be a great show here at the Cloud Show. Let's take it away. Mahesh, welcome to the Cloud Show. Hey, Magnus. Thank you for having me here. Thanks. Yes, this my is pleasure. Awesome. Definitely. So good to see you and so good to talk to you again. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah. So you're back home in Philly right now? I am. I am. I was in India and now I'm back home. You know, it's a nice. Get summer is starting here. It's nice Brilliant. weather, beautiful. Everything is green and yeah, this is a good time. Absolutely. All right, cool. So on the topic of cloud leadership, I know you have, you know, significant many years of experience running projects for cloud and in various contexts for different customers and so forth. Um, I'd like to talk to you about cost management. Um, this is the this is like the number one question, right? It's it, it should yeah. be, almost be the first question. How much is it going to cost? And yeah. the challenge we're facing is that um, costs in the cloud um, are calculated a little bit different than before. Uh, IT budget used to be this multi-million, you know, budget item uh, that that people would have uh, per year, but now with cloud, it's kind of different, right? It's it's a pay as you go. So um, maybe we could start by talking a little bit about what kind of factors factor into the cost of, of cloud services. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, a little bit before that, even you mentioned that why most people migrate to cloud is right. Look at the five top things in my list is reduce cost. That's number one. Then scalability is another issue, right? Because when your traffic is customers are growing, if you have in-house hosting, it takes forever, right, to scale yeah. that. And then faster to innovate and go live. Yeah. And then security and compliance is big thing. Big thing. It's already built in the cloud, so you don't have to do anything. And then disaster, disaster recovery. So those are five top things why people move to cloud. But as you said, cost is one of the biggest factors. That's why yeah. we, you know most companies business move to the cloud. Yeah, and, no, and this, yes. this scalability thing is is also related to cost. Having yes. an appropriate appropriate scale is what what can vary your cost according to the the workload that you, or the the user load that you have right now. Right, right, and and keep in mind by using cloud. First thing, if you look at the way older way, you used to have full time people managing your servers, right? Your networks, your security, yeah. and your databases. So Absolutely. now just moving to cloud, out of sudden, you don't need that full-time, you know, full-time resources. Yep. That automatically saves you money. Yes. Right? Then second thing, if you look at the scalability, in if you don't use cloud, then you have to buy the hardware. Then you have to set them up. Then you have to deploy the application. Yep. Cloud is already ready for you. All they have to do is push a few buttons, and it's ready to go, right? Yep. You can add, remove hardware. You can add, remove resources. This is, you can have more compute powers, bandwidth, storage, anything you can do. Everything is already there. It's just pushing a few buttons, right? That's all it is. Yes. So, yeah. And so we were looking, uh, in fact, la at the end of last week, we were looking at a migration project. And one of the things that stood out were things that we can probably migrate to the cloud and really shortcut uh, you know, certain things. Like, for example, um, before you would have uh, a SQL server and databases, and you would have a separate separate setup with, uh, and you would copy things between and so forth. What really strikes me as a massive optimization of cost are the sort of out of the bo box pass services that basically or literally have all these features just included at at a click of a button. Um, yes, that's exactly it is, and you know, 
um, you know, we I have worked on a project where we have using we use all three. I you know we use infrastructure, we use PaaS, we also use SaaS. Yeah. So that's one thing is when you are as a company you are migrating to the cloud, you have to make sure that your you have a clearly defined requirements for the cloud. Yeah. Okay. You cannot just say, oh, let's move everything to cloud right away. You have to have a strategy. You have to have planning. Make sure as a business, you have to have somebody expert who has done that. So yeah. what I see a lot, Magnus, is, is that a lot of these existing IT company, they go to cloud, but they just shift, lift and shift from their local hosting environments to cloud. And that's when it can end up costing a lot because cloud doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's it's probably going to work, right? It's going to run. It's going to be fun functional. It's going to be running. And it yes. may even be slightly better or or maybe quite a bit better than what they had before, depending on whatever deal they had before. But yes. it's not going to be great, is it? There are th some things you need to do to get to make it great. So there is a large company here in the U.S. and they migrated their 30,000 applications to cloud. And their cost was only 20 times than they were paying before. Now, now that they got panicked, their CEO got panicked, like, why are we moving to cloud? It's because their team, what they did, they took exactly, they, they literally created virtual machines, exactly same configurations, start deploying databases on the same. So this is sometimes cloud can be costly if you don't plan it right and you don't have right resources. Okay, so the, the, the key is to plan the migration. Sometimes you migrate things as is from a virtual machine to another virtual machine, but the key is to find out which things you change in the migration to move to platform services. Is that, yes. is that correct? Yes, I say it all the time. One size doesn't fit at all. Some, some applications and products or some, you know, for us in our case of C-Sharp Corner, some we have virtual machines because they are cheaper. For us yeah. rather than pay per use some are good because we only use so much limited resources yeah. then you put them as a resources like azure resource cloud resources yeah. right some yeah. then you use platform if it's already there if a sql azure sql is already there all we have to do is 99 dollars per month rather than yeah. buying that annual license so you have to look at one application one resource at a time and see what fits best that makes that's sense that's how you can save a lot of money yeah, and that's probably where they went wrong when they had 30,000 workloads because it's so much that they felt that we'll just migrate it first and then maybe we'll look at at, at optimization later. Yeah, the company right. made a mistake is that they said, oh, we have to migrate everything in 24 months. You can't yeah. do that. This is that's, not how it works. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're willing to pay for it, but that's yes. maybe not, wasn't, wasn't the case. So yeah. let's talk about scaling here because that is such a key item. Of course, you can use virtual machine scale sets to scale your virtual machine instance count. But if yep. you have a large workload, a lot of users, you can scale to more machines and you can scale into less machines when you have you know, during the night or something where fewer people are using your system. But of course, uh, scaling it, it works even cooler with, with the platform services like app service and, and, and various things uh, where scaling is just, it's just built into the system. So let's talk about what does scaling bring to us in terms of, uh, of that um, scenario for cost optimization. Yeah. So one thing, uh, you know, any business, if they are migrating first time to cloud, they have to understand that cloud operating system is designed and architected differently. It's yeah. designed to scale from day one. It automatically knows that your application needs more resources. It's already compute powers. You need more storage. It will let you know. And if you configure it right, it will automatically add those resources, right? You don't have to yeah. do much. Or you can do on demand. However you want to set it up, those settings are already there. Uh, yeah. So this is one thing we have to understand is the scaling is already there. Sometimes when architects are doing, they just don't know if all the options. So knowing all the tools and options is very important. Yeah. I'll give you an example. When, you know, we come from this background where when we first time say what kind of machine we need or what kind of storage we need or what kind of compute we need, we all goes, we always go for the top range. Like, oh, when we are at the top in peak time, we will need, you know, I don't know, 120 GB RAM and we need, you know, 
in scale in that's how we configure it. we can start configuring our new machine or new resource based on that in 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 case of cloud you always want to go to the reverse side you want to start with the minimum okay whatever minimum you need so that's the that's the off time and then you automatically say it's auto scale it's auto all these features so when your you know your application is going to need more resources it's going to automatically take that and then it's going to release that exactly uh, and 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 that's that's i think um it's kind of the reverse of how we were doing it planning in the past right yeah because in the past you would say at peak load we need this much server right this is the yeah. amount of server we need you know yeah. cpus rams whatever right and network yeah. capacity and things so we have to uh buy hardware or provision for that and yes. then that was what you had for all the time like even yep. during the weekend or the night when you had just a fraction of your users you would still have the same amount and you couldn't scale it to less you always paid for the whole thing um yep. so and that was that's how we as an industry have been taught to to do yes. things now we're doing the reverse right yes now you start hey now start with minimum and then it automatically scales that's the advantage of scalability that you don't have to do much it's going to automatically use and you only pay as much as you use that's the best part yeah um yeah, yeah. and i think in that in that one other thing you can add is that one one thing most importantly businesses miss especially the larger corporations i work with larger corporations where you have several thousand employees they have say 500 developers working there's dbas working there's architects working so in the beginning there's a it team that sets up the cloud requirements okay and then yeah. they give access to consultants like us and developers and they say oh just this is your account you can keep adding as many resources you want however you need for your applications mm -hmm. that's where businesses get wrong yes. because not everybody is educated on cloud and because they're not educated you know i see some consultant they just go like oh let me add another resource let's say 8 gb ram 12 gb ram 16 gb ram and they use it or not it's going to cost you as a business business yeah. has to pay for it as long as soon as you provision that but so in this case what businesses have to do is they have to have a enterprise wide strategy and awareness you yeah. know even you are a tester even you are a devops even you are a you are a finance guy you should at least know how cloud cost works yeah if yeah, you build sure. that then i'm logging in as a developer i always have in my mind okay make sure i don't use these resources because it will be added automatically when i need them yeah yeah that that makes a lot of sense and so at, i've had at the back of my mind what you said there that you you should be provisioning for your minimum sort of requirement and of course what you'll need to do is scale to the to your peaks you should be able to uh, automatically tune your your application and scale to the peaks that you have in your workload now um a, a fun fun anecdote there is there a saying that i've had for a number of years is that um you know i've asked a sort of a half rhetorical question what's the worst thing that can happen to your application uh, when you put it in the cloud or when you run it the worst thing that can happen to your application is that it's successful because it wasn't architected for that yes. <laughs> yes. it was architected for a small amount of users and then suddenly you're a huge success yeah. and you, you you don't have enough resource but that's something that the, the cloud can really help you with yes and 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 and, and faster like launching your things faster so another advantage of cloud is as a business is that cloud is always innovating you you want it or not right so yeah. when you use azure cloud microsoft already upgrading their security their their provision for there's a new new processors are being added there's new security and then even even like speed performance everything is already being upgraded and it's already there for you, you don't have to do anything no. so you get that as a cloud but then what happens is sometimes companies get stuck on that oh i'm a microsoft shop so we're just going to use azure i'm oh, i'm just amazon shop we're just going to aws so another thing businesses should rethink about their strategy is that it's like you go you go for a shop you you buy jeans from somewhere else you buy a shirt from somewhere else you look for pricing you look for your mm -hmm. brand you look for what you like what fits 
same thing here. Businesses have to think what fits them the best. Yeah. You, that's why multi-cloud strategy and hybrid cloud strategy is very important because some things are better by at AWS, some are better uh, with Microsoft Azure, some are better with Google Cloud. So you right. have to, this, this is how we have to think. That's interesting. And, and now with, I guess, with containerized technology, deploying applications kind of anywhere doesn't actually matter uh, yes. because containerization is, is essentially a huge abstraction over whatever you're running it on. It doesn't matter. Yep. Yep. And not only that, you also have to think like on, you know, some, some of the services are not best suited for cloud. Right. And one of the example is CDN services. CDN services are always costly on the cloud. So for example, on C-sharp corner, we have this terabytes of terabytes of these files and articles and PDFs. If we yep. put that in the cloud, it's going to cost us 25000 a month. But now we are using CDN, it cost goes to 900 a month. Oh, wow. So you still have to rethink that. Not everybody cannot go to cloud. You have to always look at that, that there are better solutions out there because some companies are just CDN. That's all they do. Yeah, 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 definitely. And so there, there are so many things to talk about in this, this, this fascinating and, and very, very important topic. Um, I'm, I'm concerned also with uh, strategies in, ter in, in relation to um, whether you migrate or you innovate, right? Um, and, and in relation to um, reserved instances uh, that you can, can uh, buy, you, you, you uh, rent a long-term contract on, on uh, compute instances and you get a discount. How, how, does that, how does that factor into cost management? So that's very important and that's leasing, right? This is literally leasing versus renting. When you lease something for longer term, car, for example, you get cheaper because you know you're going to drive that car for three years. But if you go lease a car for just the weekend, obviously it's going to be costly, right? Yeah. They, they're charging it daily. So same or thing a applies. At the time, right? Like every yeah. every time it's a weekend, you, exactly. you always pay the premium, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So same way with the cloud. So if you say reserve instances now, cloud company like Microsoft, they will create your servers and they know that they are already booked. They don't have to repackage, resell, or reservice to other clients. So they get up to eighty-five percent cheaper. I was surprised that when we start using reserve instances for two, because we know our needs are same. Like we have to run this. We need this storage regardless. We need this compute. So we created those reserve instances, two of them. And then now we are saving 65 to 85%. So yeah. as a business, if your needs are fixed, you know that you need this was minimum. It's always a good idea to go with reserve instances. Yeah, it really is. And, and so um, uh, I, I'm, I'm also, uh, you know, taken almost a little bit in shock that, that the, uh, the uh, discounts could, can be this, this significant. Now, yeah. which kinds of, which kinds of, um, um, which kinds of, of uh, infrastructure can you usually get these uh, discounts on? Yeah, so again, reserve instances not, are not available for every service because some are running as a pass and some are running as a SaaS. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you may not have those available, but okay. when you create a reserve instance, depending on the zone and region, what service they have available, you will see different options. And I so think they are working on it. They are, I think eventually you should see more and more reserve instances with more resources. So t typically, which ones do we have today? Like virtual machines? Yep. You can get virtual machine. You can get the storages. You can get your compu uh, computes. You can like almost do databases, right? Yeah, you can do SQL. I can get a VM and SQL install or part of the whole package as a, as a right. reserve instance. You can say when you're creating your machine, you can virtual machine, you can say this is the configuration I want. These are the licenses I want. So that whole thing can be a package. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's that's really, uh, I, I would say, I mean, critical information for a company. If, if they have workloads that they know they're just going to move and if there's no value in rebuilding them or, or redeploying them to platform services, we'll just leave them. Then uh, if you know you're going to have them for a longer time, definitely need to look into those, uh, those uh, discounts. Yeah. Um, yep. But in, in, on, in reverse, what you're saying is that we should be looking at, well, two things, right? Migration to uh, or innovation away from infrastructure services like virtual machines onto platform services, and then yep. 
configure that auto scaling thing, which is going to uh, make sure that your 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 compute uh, power is elastic. When you have a large number of users, it costs a lot, and yeah. and and then you pay for more instances. But when yep. you know when you're not paying for much, so th those are like your your kind of different axes to to stretch. Yeah. So there's one more feature besides auto scaling. Yeah. Sure, auto scaling one feature. There's another feature called auto shutdown. Ah. So there are machines, that, in, like in big IT companies, if there are machines, for example, there's a testing going on, mm -hmm. and you know your testing team is going to start from 8 to 5 p.m., only 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., there's yeah. no reason for you to running those machines overnight. So yeah. you can have you can configure them to auto shut down. So when they are shut down, out of sudden you're saving your money on those resources. Yeah, so, that's so so useful because what I've seen in a lot of cases is that that uh, you need an engineer to set up a testing environment. The testers cannot do it themselves. Yeah. So first you have to like plan for when the the engineer is going to set up the the testing environment, and then they do that. And then it's like a weekend coming or something, right? So yeah. it's, it's like, don't touch the testing environment. Nobody touch it. And then it's yeah. like the whole weekend is just there, all of it. And then maybe yeah. the testers will start testing on Monday, right? So yep. the yeah. whole weekend yeah. you're paying for, it's completely waste. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of, of optimization to, to take care of there. Well, so... I mean, I think we're at the end of this segment. Uh, it's been a great show because these are very, very powerful and useful tips that any cloud company, any leader in a cloud project need to take into account when they're planning for cost management. Yeah, I hope, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, the, uh, whoever is watching this show learned something from this and save some money. Um, oh, yeah, what, definitely. Yeah. I bet they do. So yeah. thank you very much for being with us today, Mahesh. And uh, I hope to talk to you again sometime soon. Thank you, Magnus. I appreciate it. Thanks.